Hi, welcome to this week's reading vlog. You are new here, my name is Alisa, and reading is one of my special interests, and that's what we're doing on this channel. And you know what day it is today? I personally don't. The only thing I know is that it is somewhere in the middle of August, and August is what? Right, Women in Translation Month. That is a month when people are encouraged to read books written by women and translated to their native language. Or maybe not their native language, like in my case, I read most of my books in English. Don't get me wrong though, I do encourage people to read Women in Translation all year long, but August is the month when we pay even more attention to it. And so I decided to do a themed vlog and compiled a TBR of four books that I really want to read. So let me just quickly go through them all not too in-depth, but I would like to introduce you to them. So they are in no particular order, but I would like to start with a Japanese author by the name of Miyako Kawakami and her book Heaven that was translated from Japanese to English by Sam Bett and David Boyd. It is a contemporary novel about a boy who is bullied at school and becomes friends with a girl who is also getting bullied at school. And I'm expecting this book to be about friendship and about violence and the impact of violence on people. The next book on my TBR is also by a Japanese author and it is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. I have a Russian copy of this book which was translated from Japanese to Russian by Dmitry Kovalenin, who also translated a lot of works of Haruki Murakami and other Japanese authors. That is interesting. I will put the name of the person who translated this book to English somewhere also in the corner because people should know their heroes. And this book is about a woman who works at a convenience store and seems to be perfectly satisfied with her life, but people around her, for some reason, expect her to progress throughout her career and to change something about her life. And I heard a lot of good things about this book, I'm very excited to read it, and can we just take a second to talk about how I finally have a physical copy of a book to read in my video. Wow. <laughs> the next book on my TBR is Paradise by Fernanda Melchor. Fernanda Melchor is a Mexican writer and the book was originally written in Spanish and translated to English by Sophie Hughes. This one I am expecting to be a car crash you can't look away from because I read the first five pages of it and it was really very gross. Our two main characters are boys, one of them is addicted to porn and is obsessively thinking about how to fuck his neighbor, I think, is this woman. And another boy is just really not satisfied with their life in the town. So these two come up with a criminal plan and decide to follow it. We will see how that one goes. And the last book on my TBR is by Olga Tokarczuk, a Polish author, also a Nobel Prize winner. And this book is called Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. It was translated from Polish to English by Antonia lloyd -Jones. This one is a thriller set in a remote Polish village. Our main character, from what I gather, is an introverted woman who is just living her life, studying astrology, doing her work. And one day to her door, a neighbor comes and tells her that their other neighbor, Bigfoot, is dead. And she inserts herself into the investigation because she thinks she knows who done it. A very interesting premise. I also think I've never read any books by Nobel Prize winners, which is gonna be interesting. And I think I'm going to be starting with Heaven by Miyako Kawakami. So yeah, without further ado, let's settle in and read some wonderful, wonderful books written by women. Welcome to Wednesday. I didn't record anything on Tuesday because Tuesday was pure chaos, so forgive me for that, but I did read on Tuesday and I finished Heaven by Miyako Kawakami and that was one hell of a book. <laughs> it is a fairly short book, but it does pack a punch. It is about bullying, so I did expect it to be very dark and very violent, but I didn't expect it to be that dark 
and violent because the descriptions of bullying are very, very, very intense. And this is something you should be aware of if you're thinking of picking up this book. I don't know how to explain it, but let's say there are different levels of bullying that can happen. And I personally never encountered anything worse than people just using words to bully a person. And the worst I've seen in media and like in TV shows is probably the classic kind of American pop culture, getting your head put in a toilet or hit by a locker door or something like that. The stuff that happens in this book, the stuff that happens in heaven is beyond. Like, the things that people do to our main character are completely insane. And I was very triggered by what was happening and it was very difficult to read. Like, maybe just as difficult as it was to read A Little Life. So I thought I should say that because I think it is an information that people will like to know before diving into this book. Aside from that, aside from the trigger warnings, I liked this book but I wouldn't say I loved it because the whole book we spent in the head of the narrator and it is very stream of consciousness heavy I will say. So in that sense I think it is a very good book and a book that you should give a try if you are not afraid to get traumatized by the things that are happening in it. I don't really want to tell any more about this book because I am afraid I'm going to spoil something because it is a very short book. But I will say that the thing that I liked and that I didn't like at the same time is how this book explored the question of why people are doing it and how people should react to getting bullied. Because the opinions that were presented to me felt very unrealistic and I will say too far on the ends of the spectrum. So I was taken a little bit aback by it and I had to spend some time to read and reread it and to actually think thoroughly about it and to figure out whether I missed something or whether it just did not make as much sense as I thought it should. So all of that combined, I would still recommend people to read this book because I think it is a very unique piece of work and I think it is an experience in and of itself and I am actually very glad that I got to read it. I didn't really give it a rating because I struggle with rating books with the star rating but I guess if I did it would be three and a half or 3.75 but this book really goes beyond the rating and beyond the number. So yeah, that's Heaven by Miyako Kawakami. I also started reading Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tekarchuk and I only read like 20 pages because I didn't have much time, but I am so swept up by it. It is very interesting. The writing is very up my alley. It's not too difficult, not too elaborate, but at the same time it is very kind of literary style that I like and already 20 pages in I highlighted some things that I instantly wanted to to just take out of the book, put it into my commonplace book and save it there to be able to refer back to because I think those were very interesting observations and ideas. So this one from what I understand is a thriller and as I said earlier our main character is living in a remote Polish village. It is winter, it is very cold and the wintry atmosphere by the way I am really feeling it and I am enjoying it. While I was reading these 20 pages I completely forgot that it was August. So this remote village only has three houses that are lived in all year round and all of the other houses are kind of like summer vacation houses, summer cottage, I don't know who you call that. So basically there were only three people, including our main heroine, living there and now one of them is dead and it poses some questions. And I am really enjoying it so far and I can't wait to get back to it. But right now I will be starting Paradise by Fernanda Melchor and I want to try my best and finish it today because it's only like 130 pages long. Without further ado, let's buckle in and read. It's been a little bit of time. I am halfway, well almost, I'm almost halfway through the book and honestly I don't know where I am and what I am anymore. This is what this book looks like. 
pretty much the entirety of it is just that stream of consciousness of an extremely misogynistic and fat phobic voice that's crazy and the thing that's even crazier is that you get into this rhythm somehow and you forget that the world exists you just kind of it's like you're asleep and you're dreaming the weirdest dream of your life that's what it feels like while reading it and then when you stop reading it and you kind of snap out of it you're like wow where the f was i was i sleeping was i actually asleep i don't remember sitting down and reading anything chaos absolute absolute chaos i don't even know if i'm enjoying it but it is definitely an interesting experience it is extremely difficult to read and at the same time it is extremely difficult to stop while you're reading it because you really get into the flow and just so far the only complaint i have is i get it it is stream of consciousness it is very descriptive but some things are just so irrelevant and unnecessary i'm definitely surprised by this book i am stunned <laughs> i am almost halfway through and really nothing has happened yet so far we only got like an exposition of the lives of the characters and of the mind of our main character but yeah that is interesting i will try to finish it today and i'll get back to you tomorrow with my thoughts Welcome to Thursday. My hair does not want to cooperate today and my head doesn't want to cooperate as well. <laughs> a very difficult and chaotic day so far but I still wanted to come out here and talk to you about Paradise by Fernanda Melchor which I finished yesterday and oh my god was that a ride. It was a ride and then we crashed and it was a car crash you could not look away from. <laughs> so let me remind you that this book is about two boys who are not good people none of them are there isn't like a single character who is a good person this book is about a toxic environment this book is about what it's like to be growing up in a toxic environment this book is about what comes out of a toxic environment this is a book about toxicity this is a book about masculinity this is a book about so many things and it talks about them in such an elaborate way and i think it really shows not tells i am not very good at plot summaries especially when my head is not working properly so if you want to know more about this book and if you want a more proper explanation of what the hell is the dynamic without spoilers you should go watch a video about paradise on books and bow channel they are fantastic and i think their video 
on Paradise was really good. I will leave a link to the video in the description. This is chaotic, but let me tell you what I thought about this book and of my journey with this book, because it is a short one, it's 120 pages long, but I had a heck of a journey, okay? So the first 50 pages or so, I was really just not vibing with it that much. Maybe I just couldn't concentrate, but I couldn't help but skim through the lines and I could not really fall into pace with the writing. Maybe I was just way too caffeinated, I don't know. Most of the time coffee doesn't work on me, but some days I just turn into an electrocuted squirrel type thing. But yeah, first half of the book I just didn't vibe with and I even thought about DNFing it, but oh my god, am I glad I I didn't. Because when I took a break and came back to the book in the evening and started reading it, it swallowed me whole. I am a very slow reader and I also can't sit for like two or three hours straight and read a book unless it is something very, very, very captivating. So a lot of the times, even if I am liking the book, it is very difficult for me to just sit and read for more than an hour straight. This one let me tell you, I read the last 60 pages of it in one sitting. I was inside the book. I don't know what was happening in the world. For all I care, there could have been dinosaurs walking past my windows. I was inside this book, eating these words as they were eating me. And I sat there for three whole hours reading it. It felt like 30 minutes. Yes, I am this kind of a slow reader. It takes me three hours to read 60 pages of a book. Yes, you heard that right. I think it has to do with the fact that I sound everything inside my head as if I was talking things through and reading out loud and I can't switch that off, so we work with what we work with. Anyway, it was absolutely fascinating. The whole book is just, I want to say, a stream of consciousness, but it is written in third-person perspective, so we're not exactly inside the head of our main character, but it feels like we're looking at the world through his eyes, so it is kind of a stream of consciousness. I don't know what you call it, I'm not good at these at words. Words? I don't know them. So I will just say that it is a stream of words and things and events and feelings and opinions and everything, everything, everything. And one paragraph streams for like four or five pages. And this book is divided into three chapters, so you really don't get get any breaks. It's not like you read it for 10 pages and then you can take a breather because the chapter is over. No, it just never ends. And you're swallowed whole by this book, by this prose, which was beautiful but disgusting, but beautiful but so, so, so gut-wrenching. And oh my god, I am absolutely fascinated with this book. I gave it four stars because there were still moments that were repetitive, there were moments that were described that were, I think, unnecessary and kind of bored you. But the whole thing is mind-blowing. And to me, it's not just a book, it's an experience packed inside two covers. It was like a roller coaster ride, like conceptually. It was not a book. The way I felt after reading it did not feel the same as I feel after reading a book. It felt like I consumed a completely different type of media. I don't know if I'm making sense, but nothing is making sense to me now anyway. I don't even know how you will recommend this book to anybody because I think it is so unique and so weird and so triggering, read trigger warning. There is a ton of misogynistic and fat phobic language. There is a use of the R word. Before you want to read that one, at least read the sample text so that you know what you're getting into because the first five, ten pages of it are pretty much the same level of disturbing language and descriptions that is going to be there throughout the whole book. So yeah, there's that. And I forgot what I was talking about before I went into the trigger warnings. Oh my god. Oh, I don't know how I will be able to recommend this book to anybody. What type of person do I recommend this to? Because I think it is just something so unique and something you don't see in literature often that it is a hit or miss for absolutely everybody. And at the beginning of it, I was absolutely certain it will be a miss for me. But then I ended up absolutely just enjoying it so much. And it makes me want to read more stuff like that. And it also makes me question my reading tastes and just what is happening 
happening inside my head. I don't know. So yeah, all in all, it was a roller coaster. It was a car crash I could not look away from. A car crash I did not want to look away from. I absolutely recommend giving it a shot because it's only 120 pages long, but only as long as you are okay with the language and with the trigger warnings because I was not so much traumatized by the language. I was absolutely disgusted though. I was haunted by the descriptions at night. I closed my eyes and I could not stop seeing what was portrayed to me by the words of the author. I'm making some bizarre sentence structures right now. But no joke, I had trouble falling asleep because I closed my eyes and the images of what was happening, the images of what was being described in the book at different points, they were so vivid. It was intense. I had to put on a YouTube video and actually listen to it so that I could fall asleep without thinking about the book and seeing these images. So yeah, that's that one. That is Paradise by Fernanda Melchor, written originally in Spanish and translated to English by Sophie Hughes. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful translation. And now I am excited to move on to something less traumatizing, hopefully. Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata is my next read, as well as Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tekarchuk. And I'm very excited to be reading both of these books, and I, I will go do that now, because I've been already talking for way too long. Once again, I cannot believe it is already Friday. This week slipped away from me very quickly, but I am here for a quick update to tell you that I have finished Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, and it was a very easy and a very quick read. This one is 144 pages, and I flew through it, and I actually even annotated it quite a bit. I was not going to do that, but then I just kind of did and there is a lot of my annotations and a lot of them are very mad, angry ones <laughs> because there was one character in particular who angered me and triggered me so, so, so much that at some point I even annotated it in Russian and when I start writing in the book in Russian it means that I am really angry with whatever the character is doing or saying but aside from that, it was a very, very beautiful little book that I enjoyed from beginning to the very end and it tells us about a woman in her 30s who her whole life has been working in a konbini which is a convenience store in Japanese. I am wondering if the English translation has it as konbini or if it refers to it as convenience store the whole time because in Russian translation it is called konbini just like in Japanese. But that aside, our main character Keiko has never been married, has never been in a relationship, has never had a full-time job basically and she's been working her whole life in a kombini and she's been loving her job but of course societal expectations have been pretty annoying and expectantly a lot of people have been asking Keiko her whole life when is she gonna get a full-time job when is she gonna get married how come are you not married yet what are you gonna do with your life you're too old to make kids all that stuff and again I'm very bad at summarizing it is a very short book so I'm afraid I'm going to spoil something but I will just say that this book celebrates mundane and discusses how dysfunctional the world we are living in is and how the system will try to push away everybody who is not quote-unquote normal which is something that I as a neurodivergent person have been thinking a lot about and in my humble opinion Keiko the main character is neurodivergent as well anyway I'm getting sidetracked <laughs> but I think that this little book does a great job at talking about how problematic stereotypes are and how problematic the societal expectation and societal norms are when it comes
comes to people who are different from others. And it also shows under how much pressure someone like Keiko might be living in that other people don't understand and just don't see. So yeah, this is my very weird and incoherent sort of review. I am not very good at reviewing stuff and I am even worse at reviewing stuff that hits so close to home. So to sum up, I will just say that I really enjoyed this book and I think this book is very important and pretty much everyone should read it. And I really really loved the ending that was kind of badass and made me chuckle and I almost cried as well. So now that we're done with the third book of the week, I cannot believe I've read so many already. I will move on to reading Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tekarczuk. I'm very excited about that one and I am definitely not going to be finishing it today, but I think I have a real solid chance to be able to finish it by tomorrow evening or something. And I'm really excited to go read it and I'm really excited to get back to you with my thoughts once I have something to tell you about this book. Hello and welcome to Saturday. Oh my god. We did not read anything yesterday because we were too busy fighting executive dysfunction and having a meltdown, but these things happen on a weekly basis. But we persevere nevertheless and we sometimes just kind of give up. <laughs> I'm here to wrap this vlog up. I'm not going to be finishing Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead in this video, but I will update you on this book in the next one because I did start the book. I am really enjoying it, but unfortunately I don't have much to say about it at the moment. And I just really want to finish this video and edit it and get it uploaded. So that at least some of the pressure is off of my shoulders. One day I will learn how to set achievable goals, but for now we work with what we have to work with. So yeah, I apologize I guess for having only three books in this video, but again, I uh, come back next week <laughs> to hear my thoughts on Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, because I will have finished it by the end of next week. And as for right now, I just want to go through all of the books I have actually read this week and kind of conclude or whatever, because I have given sort of full reviews on every single one of these books as I finished them and now I just I need closure okay I need closure <laughs> so the first book we read this week was Heaven by Miyako Kawakami translated from Japanese to English by Sam Bat and David Boyd and it was a good one I liked it not necessarily loved it it was about bullying it was about the concept of bullying it was about violence and what it's like growing up in a violent environment and what it does to a person. I do recommend it because it's a very unique book that presents a very interesting perspective, but be mindful of the trigger warnings before you get into it. It's a very difficult read. Next book that we read this week was Paradise by Fernanda Melchor, translated from Spanish to English by Sophie Hughes. That one was a wild ride. That one was a car crash I could not look away from and it, oh my god, I'm still thinking about this book. This book is still haunting me. What, two or three days later, I think? It was absolutely insane. It is a book about toxicity and about masculinity and about growing up in a very toxic environment. It is a book that gets you to think what made a certain person the way they came out to be. The way it is written is absolutely marvelous. The stream of words, thoughts, feelings, events, everything. Paragraphs streaming for pages and you're swallowed whole by this book. I really enjoyed my experience and at the same time it was was a repulsive, disgusting, horrible because of the topics that this book brings up and because of everything that is happening in this book and because we are looking through the eyes of someone who is not a good person and whose life and environment are just infinitely sad and depressing. This book is not just a book, it is an experience encapsulated in between the two covers and even though I was not really vibing with Paradise as I was reading the first 20, 30, 40 pages, I'm very grateful that I did not DNF it. I'm very grateful that I got into the flow and had an opportunity to finish it and get absolutely swept up by it. This book I also recommend, again, be very, very, very mindful of trigger warnings. And I think it is the kind of book that is worth giving a shot, even if you are not completely sure that it's going to be your thing, because it's very difficult to predict whether you're going to like it or not. And then the last-ish book that I read this week was Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, a short book. I actually have a paperback copy of it in my hands, physical copy of a book. Can you imagine? It's honestly such a delight to have some 
something to hold up <laughs> to the camera uh, and to be able to touch and tub and write my raging thoughts inside of it. Anyway, a Russian copy that was translated from Japanese to Russian by Dmitry Kavalenin. I will put the name of a person who translated it from Japanese to English also somewhere in the corner. And this one I read in one sitting, absolutely enjoyed it, loved my time with this book, even though I was very annoyed <laughs> with a certain character, but I loved it. It is about what it's like to be different from other people and how society will push different people away and how difficult it is to live like that. But it is also about celebrating mundanity and non-conforming to societal expectations. I really think that it's the kind of books that everybody should read because it reads very easily, it is genuinely an enjoyable read, but it also is talking about a very, very, very important thing. And of course, for me personally, it was a very relatable read. I am neurodivergent and society has been difficult. <laughs> and actually, one thing that I did not mention that Keiko, the main character, one thing that she mentions a lot in this book is how she consists of different people and how she straight up copies behaviors of people that surround her and how her way of talking and moving will change based of who is surrounding her. But it is something that I do. <laughs> it is something that I really, really struggle with. And it is something that is giving me a huge kind of personality crisis. And I know that neurotypical people also do it to some extent, but just for kind of different reasons. The extent to which I personally do it is unfathomable. <laughs> but yeah, this is something that I really loved seeing in this book. And this is something that I related so, so, so much to. And for that, I'm very, very thankful. And the last book that I have talked about it, the last book that I have started this week, but have not finished, is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tekarczuk, translated from Polish to English by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. Not much to say about this book, except first 20 pages that I've read, I really, really enjoyed. I'm very, very excited to get back to it. But I thought I will still mention this book, because it is still a part of the video. Anyway, that's, that's it. That's the wrap-up. <laughs> I will get back to you in the next video with my thoughts on Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. This is a very long name. But for now, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you got interested in some of these books or in reading women in translation in general. If you have any women in translation book recommendations, maybe something you've read a long time ago or maybe something you've read this August that you really enjoyed, you can leave them in the comments. I will be very, very interested to read about that. And yeah, I need to say my goodbyes. Hope your day is going well. Hope your week is going well. Hope your next week is going to be even better. And I will see you next week in the next video. Bye! Thank you.